Hi friends, uh, in this video I'm going to talk about will there be a market crash in 2021? So what I've noticed in the last uh, few days is that there is a lot of debates that goes on where people talk about if PE ratio, normally called as price to earnings ratio, is relevant in today's market or not. Though my discussion uh, will not be uh, about settling down on a judgment whether the ratio makes sense or not, uh, but in this video I'm going to lay a key guiding principles that will help an investor to have a proper framework while he makes a potential investment. The very first thing uh, if we remember the dot-com bubble uh, that happened in the year 2000, so most of the ID stocks, uh, including Infosys, Wipro, and also a few other stocks, they were trading at a PE ratio of greater than 200. So what that means is uh, that the market by default anticipates uh, that the earnings growth of these companies is going to be exponential to justify those earnings but which we know for sure uh, that might or might not happen so when i look back uh, studying the historical market crashes uh, in almost several centuries what i noticed was that most of the stocks were again trading at a higher valuation so what that means for an investor uh, is to be cautious uh, in investing in these kind of companies, especially when the valuations are quite high. So now the question comes, uh, will that be a market crash? Uh, so now to answer that, uh, no one can predict when the market crash is going to come. Uh, the reason is uh, we, might come, we might see many veterans come on TV where they will say that, uh, that the market crash is going to come, but they won't tell the time. If they tell the time, they won't tell that the crash is going to come. So no one can anticipate both at the same time. Uh, but we as investors should be able to understand what are the key things that we love to keep in mind always so that we can separate uh, the signal from the noise uh, that always happens in the stock market. So now a couple of things that I see going to happen right now is uh, regardless of the discussion that happens about the ratios and whether the markets are overvalued or undervalued. What I do understand is that, that the market always is forward looking, even before the actual earnings again come in. Uh, with that note, in India, what I find is uh, contrasting where almost uh, the index stocks, stocks that are listed uh, under the Nifty and Sensex composition is already tend to be overvalued. Uh, with that, so now what's happening is we are in an environment where uh, uh, there is a low interest rate which is being uh, set by central banks across the world and also uh, the inflation is again rising. So we are seeing this trend playing out very well uh, in the commodity stocks. So if you just see any chart of a metal stock over the last 15 months, most of the stocks, they have almost uh, grown uh, 5x to 10x regardless of the cap they are, whether they are a large cap, mid cap, or even small cap. So almost all stocks, metal stocks or commodity stocks, they have rallied exponentially and beaten the index by a huge percentage point. So what this means is that, that the inflation is already there and it has reached the main street where now almost most of the FMCG companies will come under the inflationary pressures and which has an impact on their profitability. So when the profitability is hit, the earnings per share, which is the profit after tax that comes in the hands of investors will also reduce, which makes P, the price earnings multiple, appear even more expensive. And the institutional investors, they find the stock to be unattractive where they might move their capital to a different asset class, which might have a higher upside and higher return expectations. So now, as investors, 
when we are entering from a low inflation environment to a high inflation to high interest rate environment which is a high possibility to happen in the next 12 to 15 months the history has told us that central banks cannot keep uh, interest rates low for a very long period of time so there will come a time when the inflation has gone higher uh, it will start hitting the uh, investment accounts where the central bank will be forced to increase the interest rates to, to contain the inflation. So during these times, it's important for an investor to again keep in mind that stocks might not be the best place to be in if it's not attractively valued. What most people think is there is only one type of asset class, which is equities, which is not the case. So there are plenty of other asset classes like real estate, gold, and also again sovereign bonds and debt funds uh, which can also be equivalently attractive as well so during these volatile times uh, it's important to remember that the capital protection becomes more important than capital appreciation so I want to quote uh, from a from an ancient uh, book called uh, uh, Tirukural uh, which uh, I am holding in my uh, hand right now so which uh, again was written by uh, Valluvar uh, so he is a famous uh, philosopher in Tamil Sangam literature so he has written almost uh, 1330 couplets uh, on three different categories like vir like virtue wealth and also love uh, so in one of the subcategories under wealth uh, he has a chapter called gambling so under gambling so he has almost written 10 couplets so these 10 couplets uh, what he says is like though able to win uh, let not one desire gambling for even what is won is like a fish swallowing the iron in fish hook so what he means by this is though one might have a high chances of winning by gambling or taking short-term bets uh, it's almost like uh, like a fish swallowing the iron in a fish hook so where if things if the tide turns around uh, we might be at a loss uh, so that uh, we are being very careful about estimating our downside before we even undertake such uh, activities and the second one is primarily he talks is uh, that uh, that wise men will not undertake any activity which will result in permanent loss of capital so in today's times what I understand is uh, uh, like we are being given a free trading account with a minimal account balance that's been given by the uh, trading account uh, broker so where people starts people start to trade in the stocks that they like so due to which uh, they don't understand the basics of how to evaluate a stock and they blindly invest in some random companies when when the stocks crash people panic and they sell most of their holdings resulting in a significant uh, loss leading to a loss of permanent capital so now which brings us uh, to the point so how do we prepare ourselves for a market crash that might or might not happen the number one thing that all of us should keep in mind is in terms of asset allocation so asset allocation is very important because we don't want to have all our eggs in one single basket so we want to first diversify that into different asset classes so that uh, it meets the risk appetite uh, that we are willing to take so for example you might not be comfortable with the volatility of the stock markets that's completely fine but what you have to rather do is to have your assets diversified in much more stable investment asset classes like debt funds or liquid funds or even fixed deposits right so by diversifying that so we are not going to lose all the asset classes by investing in that so that's number one number two is going to be being in the game for long term so most people want to invest for short term so where they might take trading bets for one month three months or even days or weeks so where we might want to find companies which we can hold for a long time so there are many examples uh, that's out there uh, which uh, we can actually see and understand that and 
The third thing that I want to talk about is in terms of uh, like having a concrete plan for exit. So if we are directly investing in equities, how do we know that we are the last person to exit, right? Which is when uh, understanding the company's fundamentals becomes more important. We should know whether uh, it makes sense for us to uh, invest in stocks uh, that will grow over the next three, five years. If the stock market is again factoring in the earnings growth of next three, five years, uh, it doesn't make sense to continue holding that stock, especially when there is no long-term runway. Rather, we could book our losses, book our profits, and we could again uh, place that in a more stable environment for it to deploy when the market again turns in our favor. And the last important rule is uh, in terms of uh, waiting for the right time, like where again uh, we might have to understand uh, uh, what are the likelihoods that we will be winning in any market conditions, right? Uh, so for instance, if you have a medical emergency, do you have an emergency fund in place so that uh, you can, you know, you are not forced to sell your stock for an emergency, uh, rather you can uh, uh, remain invested until the market recovers, right? So this becomes more important. So now the question becomes, should we worry about whether the market will crash or not? Not necessarily. So what we should rather do is to, un to know what we own and own what we know. That's the most important thing. More money has been made more money has been, more money has been lost anticipating the market crash than the market crash itself right this is a famous quote that was said by peter lynch uh, he ran a fund called magellan fund which out, outperformed the market for consistently for 20 years so i will repeat that for you again more money has been lost anticipating the market crash than the actual market crash itself so as investors, we have to understand if the company is fundamentally qualified and if it's run by, promo by honest promoters and if they have a competitive advantage, uh, it doesn't matter uh, what the short term performance is, but rather uh, uh, over long term, they tend to perform well. So with that note, I will uh, want to hear your views about how you are thinking about at this time. So are you predicting a market crash? Are you thinking about uh, the interest rates are going to increase please feel free to drop your comments so that i'll address each comment one by one and if needed i'll even make a video in in the next uh, upcoming day uh, thank you so much and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel uh, so that uh, you or you might you might get latest updates if and when i launch a new video and feel free to share it with your friends thank you so much have a good day